on information box ticket lifestyles brings you today microbiology topic on xylose lysine deoxyculate xld agar but before starting this video don't forget to like this video subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon button table of content includes principle of xld uses composition preparation cloning characteristics quality control and lastly limitations let's dive into a brief introduction about xld agar a specific medium for the isolation of salmonella and shigella species from clinical specimens and food samples tyler created xld agar in the beginning to isolate and identify shigella from stool samples In addition to being distinguished from non-pathogenic lactose fermenters, numerous non-pathogens that do not ferment lactose or sucrose are also distinguished from pathogens. Additionally, the medium was formulated to increase the frequency of growth of the more fastidious pathogens, which in other formulations have often failed to grow due to the inclusion of excessively toxic inhibitors. The claim for the comparatively high effectiveness of XLD agar in the primary isolation of Shigella and Salmonella has been substantiated by the findings of number of clinical tests. It is advised to test foods, dairy products, and water using XLD agar, which is a component of USP microbiological limit test for determining if Salmonella is present or absent in specimens. principle of xld xld is both a selective and differential media it includes yeast extract which is a source of vitamins and minerals gram positive microorganisms are inhibited by it because sodium deoxyculate is used as a selective agent since shigella is the only enteric that does not ferment xylose it is introduced into the medium because this characteristic allows for the differentiation of shigella species without lysine salmonella would quickly ferment the xylose and become indistinguishable from non pathogenic species making it difficult to identify salmonella group from non pathogens when the xylose supply is depleted by salmonella the lysine is attacked by the enzyme lysine decarboxylase and the ph returns to the alkaline state stimulating the shigella reaction lactose and sugar are added to create too much acid in order to stop lysine positive coliforms from reverting in a similar way the color of phenol red indicator turns yellow with xylose lactose and sucrose conversion to acid bacteria that decarboxylate lysine to cadaverin can be recognized by the appearance of red coloration around the colonies due to an increase in ph The pH indicator may display a range of color hues as a result of these simultaneous or subsequent reactions or it may undergo a color shift from yellow to red after an extended incubation. An H2S indicator system made of sodium thiosulfate and ferric ammonium citrate is added to the formulation to increase its capacity to distinguish between various substances. This system allows for the visualization of hydrogen sulfide generated which forms chlorines with black centers the acid reaction caused by non pathogenic h2s producers inhibit the blackening of the colonies which only occurs at neutral or alkaline ph since they do not decarboxylate lysine kindly show your support to this channel by subscribing uses of xld agar for the isolation of gram negative enteric pathogens from fecal species and other clinical material xld agar is a selective differential medium salmonella and shigella species can be isolated microbiological testing of foods water and dairy products composition of xld agar ingredients per liter of deionized water in this table you can see lactose 7.5 gm sucrose 7.5 gm sodium thiosulfate 6.8 gm n lysine 5 gm sodium chloride 5 gm xylose 3.75 gm yeast extract 3.0 gm 
sodium deoxyculate 2.5 gm ferric ammonium citrate 0.8 gm phenol red 0.08 gm agar 15 gm final ph 7.4 at 25 degrees celsius this was the recipe for making xld agar on your own normally you will have the xld agar in a powder form which will be already made for you let's see the preparation of xld agar first suspend 55 grams of dehydrated medium in 1000 ml purified or distilled water next frequently stir the medium while heating it until it boils note avoid autoclaving transfer right away to 50 degree celsius water bath and then pour into sterilized petri plates after chilling note it is advisable not to prepare large volumes which will require prolonged heating and may produce precipitation now let's see the cloning characteristics of xl diager acid compounds produced during the degradation of xylose lactose and sucrose change the medium's color from red to yellow clones with alkaline conditions produce hydrogen sulfate which results in the development of black centers the acidic environment that results from the fermentation of carbohydrates inhibit this process in the absence of lactose and sucrose fermentation lysine decarboxylation results in a return to an alkaline state which changes the medium's color back to red typical clony morphology on xld agar are as follow salmonella typhi will be red clonies with black centers salmonella chlorelliasis red clonies shigella sonai red clonies shigella flexinerii red clonies large flat yellow clonies some strains may be inhibited proteus vulgaris yellow clonies enterobacter klebsiella mucoid yellow clonies pseudomonas aeruginosa pink flat rough clonies gram positive bacteria no growth to slight growth quality control for xld agar lastly limitations of xld agar some proteus and pseudomonas species have the potential to produce red false positive colonies more than 48 hours of incubation may produce false positive results Shigella species are resembled by Salmonella paratyphi A, Salmonella chlorelliosus, Salmonella polorum, and Salmonella gallinarium because they have the ability to produce red clones without black centers. On Excel D agar some proteus strains will produce clones with black centers. Organisms need to be in pure culture in order to be identified for definitive identification morphological biochemical and or serological test should be run rarely is a single medium sufficient to identify every organism in a specimen that could be significant to gain further information and assure the recovery of possible pathogens cultures of specimens produced on selective medium should be compared with specimens grown on non selective medium And that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching till the end. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon button so you don't miss any of my videos. Thank you so much for staying till the end.